Thank you. Oh. All right. I'm going to show you some more synthesized behaviors. This work was done uh, with Tom Harris and Emma. So I'm going to show you examples of receiving a rise in trajectory optimization. That means that um, the trajectory is being optimized. The first several control signals from that trajectory is applied to the system. Um, a new measurement of the system is performed, and the trajectory is re-optimized. This is also called model predictive control. Um, so first I'm going to show a very simple hopper with six degrees of freedom. Uh, this is the passive system. I'm showing you the contact forces, and here you see the user interacting with the passive system. The user is applying forces to the system. You'll see this later with a more complicated system. We turn the controller on, and it gets up. The only thing it tries to do is put the center of mass over the foot and minimize torques. That is all it knows. That is the only input to the system. Nothing is being pre-computed. Nothing is uh, computed offline. And all the behaviors that you see emerge as a result of minimizing the cost. So now I'm showing you modeling error. This is what happens when the controller um, thinks that the, the mass is double what it actually is, and this is the opposite. So here the controller is trying to control a system that's twice as heavy as it really is. So this is like someone who wakes up to be obese. <laughs> so here is a humanoid. Uh, the cost is slightly more complicated. So this is getting up in slow motion. Now I'm going to show you the passive system a little bit. So this is me just pulling it around. You see the physics are pretty realistic. I can talk a little bit about that in the question and answer. And that was small per perturbation. Turn it off. It, when the controller is off, the figure is green. Turning it off, turning it on. Small perturbation, big perturbation. Let's see that in slow motion. <coughs> this is the small perturbation. Big one. And again, the only thing it's trying to do more or less, there are a few details, but it's basically trying to put the center of mass over the center of pressure, and everything else emerges from that. Um, yeah, that's another kung fu-like thing that I'm going to show you in slow motion. Um, the uh, So the next simulations of the humanoid from here on actually use the uh, physical values of the DARPA Atlas robot. Um, just what we have so far, masses and joints. <clears throat> so the first one was walking without any orientation cost. I just said, make the velocity such and such. And this is walking with orientation cost. In other words, walk in a certain direction. So, why does this work? Um, first of all, you need an efficient trajectory optimizer. We use a fairly simple shooting method uh, with a, a bunch of improvements. Um, you have, as Igor told you, uh, soft or smooth contact models are uh, absolutely necessary. That means that you can uh, get a derivative of the contact model. Uh, important thing to remember is that the contact model needs to be smooth only in the planning phase. So the actual simulation can have hard contact, but the planner must think that the contact is soft for the derivatives to work. Uh, thirdly, you need a fast physics simulator. We have uh, one called Joko. And uh, a nice um, nice aspect of MPC is that ooh, a nice aspect of MPC is that uh, the faster your computer is, the better your controller is. 
And lastly, um, interactive uh, control design. So one of the nice things about these online methods is that um, uh, you, get, you get feedback very quickly uh, regarding how well your controller is, operate, is uh, operating. So we have an interactive uh, GUI. Uh, the simulator is, of course, written in, uh, in C, but the, the GUI is in, let's leave that for a minute. The GUI is in MATLAB, and having a fast control design loop is extremely important to get all these behaviors working. And the last thing I'm going to show you today is um, a little quadruped we've been working on. Um, as you can see, it's pretty cute. And now uh, I think I'm going to kick it in the head, <laughs> and then I'm going to kick it in its ass, and it does just fine. And now, I'm, and this is a this was produced with a very different algorithm. If you want to know how this was produced, this is a, a limit cycle. I'd like to talk to Tom. And that's that. <laughs> Do I get to pick the question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, very nice impressive simulations. I wonder, did you also apply uh, kind of uh, physical constraints like on power, uh, mechanical end stuff? And, uh, well, so certainly there are constraints the in, in the model itself. So, uh, he asked if there were any constraints, and I answered that certainly there's joint constraints, otherwise this would look the way it looks. And uh, there's effective torque constraints because there's a quadratic torque cost. Uh, you can make the torque cost, if it wasn't quadratic, if it was something that had very sharp bounds, that would be an effective constraint. Yeah, I, I mean hard constraints, really solid constraints, or not solid constraints? I can only do soft constraints, but I can harden them as much as I want. So, you know, in the limit, you see what I'm saying? Yes? Did you have lots of constraints that the person looked like they were getting up really fast, faster than what uh, would be considered safe, I guess? Yes. Um, that has to do with the horizon that we used. So, uh, for I think mostly for numerical reasons, we can only use a short uh, horizon. So it only sees about one second into the future. Um, so that means that if I gave it uh, the torque cost, which I believe humans have, it would probably get stuck. So it would. So it's very easy to, for this thing to get stuck in local minimum because it's just a local optimizer. And one way to avoid that is to make it very strong. Yes. The most important thing is uh, so-called policy lag. So you've got two processes running. One is the uh, simulation of reality, or just reality if you're controlling a real robot. And the other is the MPC, MPC engine, which gives you new policies. So it takes a measurement, gives you a new policy. It takes a measurement, gives you a new policy. So the the, the delay of that loop is the most important factor for the quality of the control. So if you can, can if you can do one iteration of trajectory optimization faster, your controller will be better because your policy will be newer. Yes. Uh, you, you show the robustness with the, the modeling error. Yes. Let's say you really care about the robustness. Is it how are there ways to be Question. I don't know. I would love to know the answer to that question. Can you repeat the question? Uh, he, he, he asked, is there a systematic way to measure robustness and or to make the controller more robust? And I, I guess I guess the simple answer would be uh, to do an ensemble solution. So instead of optimizing one trajectory, I could optimize if I had really lots of computers. I could optimize several trajectories, each one of them assuming a slightly different uh, dynamics model, but all of them using the same policy. No way who does MPC so far does sensitivities as far as the optimization. Uh, so far, not that I know of. I'm asking. Yeah, there's plenty of people do that. Not in our world, but in the MPC world. Like in what world? The model predictor control. So the P 
people who really care, you know, people who control real things, uh, you know, like airplanes and satellites, things that cost a lot of money, uh, they probably do that. Yes. different kind of optimizations that we're doing. So this is using, it's a shooting method, it's using forward dynamics. And that means that um, it's very easy, it, it exploits uh, divergent aspects of the dynamics. Talk to me later. It's 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 a slightly it, it's not a trivial effect to, uh, to explain, but it has to do with the different kind of optimizations that we're doing, and also with the the dynamics model. So Igor's Igor's physics is a little uh, it's not totally real physics. This is this is a lot closer to real physics. <laughs>